Hello, this is Cuckoo, and I'm here with the Analog Rhythm. Now, I want to do a proper walkthrough on this synth. It's a drum synth from Electron Sweden, but the thing is, it's so huge. It's a huge machine. Uh, well, it, it's sort of small, but you know, it, there's a lot of things you could do with it. So uh, I'm, I'm, I don't, I just don't know where to start. So what I'm going to do is just to to try and walk through steps and try and make some things on the fly and and try and you know make it all make sense. Uh, and uh, if it's uh, helpful for for some of you watching this, then uh, then you know all good. But uh, hit me up in the comments afterwards and, and tell me, you know, what you would have liked uh, to see more thorough and stuff. You know, I'm going to hit straight to it and, and let's uh, see what we can do. Okay. So, the analog rhythm is a drum machine, and it's analog and digital. You can play analog drum sounds and you can also play samples. I believe all the preset sounds are uh, in fact uh, analog. There's a drum. If you want to change the parameters of a drum, hit track and the actual drum to select what, which one you're editing. Track, bass drum. And we've got the trigger page, synth page, sample page, filter page, amp page and LFO. I'm going to go to the synth page and start messing about. Tuning, some sweep, uh, waveform, hold time, tick, uh, level, you know, and I noticed that the overall volume, um, I want to raise the overall vol volume a bit. I'm going to go into the effects menu and hit the compressor and turn up the volume a bit there. And maybe, uh, yeah, maybe that's fine. Maybe I'm even going to go to the distortion page and raise the overall distortion volume and, and um, so everything I'm going to do from that from this point on is going to be affected by the fact that I raised the, the dist a little bit but it's not very um, um, destructive if you if you treat it gently it's sort of like a foolproof um, compressor in a way but you can You, you know, you can crush it, but um, yeah, let's uh, be around here. So I'm going to use the function key a lot uh, because when I twist a knob without the function key, I'm doing it in fine increments. If I hit the, the function key, it's going to jump between um, snap points that the developers has chosen to be, you know, like half full, half zero, stuff like that. So I'm going to use it a lot. Uh, so pay attention. <laughs> okay. I'm going to exit the effects menu and go back here. Okay. Um, so I got, what I noticed is that the sub, uh, the sub base of, of this machine is, is out of this world. I've never had a machine that can operate in the sub register the the way that this analog rhythm can. So if you've got a, a proper headset with a good bass response, you should be hearing what I'm hearing now, and it's thumping in the in the sub register. But it also means that you you need to be careful, but because if you don't have a, a sound system that can hear, you know, the sub register. You might be in trouble when you send it off to something uh, and suddenly it's just booming when you're on stage. So be careful, it's powerful. Uh, okay, hold, short, decay. And if I want to, uh, I can go to the amp page now and, and create, if I want it even fatter, 
I can go with the overdrive. And if the decay is a long one and the, the overdrive, you probably heard this sort of sound in a lot of demos for this analog rhythm. And uh, it's the overdrive that's sort of saturating the sound in a phenomenal way. I just can't get enough of that overdrive. And on the amp page, you also have a DK. So which one do you want to use? The DK of the synth engine? Or this DK on the ampli amplification page? So if you turn off the DK here, you know, it's gradually lowering the volume of the of the overdriven sound. But if you do it in the synth menu, it's gradually lowering the volume before it's sent off to the overdrive and before it's sent off to the amp decay. Yeah. So different things. But I noticed that it's a good it's a good idea to keep the the decay of the drums not to infinite because it, it can uh, produce some noises when when all the pads are on on um, infinite decay. So be, pay attention to that. And turn it down a bit. Okay, that's a massive drum. Okay, let's see if I want to make this pressure sensitive I want to you know uh, as the more I, the harder I hit it the more overdrive let's do that okay let's hit function and uh, synth and we're in the synth menu we go down here and we notice that velocity the volume is on by default so if I hit it light it's uh, a, a low volume hit Yeah, I turn it off for now, so it's a uh, no velocity now. But I go into the velocity menu, velo velocity mo modification menu, and I um, decide that you know we've got one, two, three, four parameters that we can change. One, two, three, four, and um, I'm gonna turn the, the knob here and select from the menu which um, parameter I want to change. I want to go to the amp. Um, overdrive and yes and I want to race it a lot so when I and I, another way to try this is that with a retrig if you hit the retrig trig while I'm holding retrig I can also there's a small menu showing up here so retrig 1 by 16 so it's uh, 16th uh, notes. If I turn it down to maybe 4 for a kick drum, or 8 maybe. By applying aftertouch pressure, I can listen to what I just did with a velocity modification. Maybe I should apply some uh, volume change as well. Let's take the second knob and go to amp volume. Yes, and turn it up a bit, but that means I probably need to go and turn it down. Let's see. Yeah, it's massive. Okay. Um, so I applied two changes to the velocity setting now. Okay, um, let's um, go out there. Press no a couple of times to exit all the, the menus. And we've got the amp here. I'm going to turn down the overall volume a bit of the kick drum. Okay, next one, the snare drum. Track, snare. Select the track. Track, snare. So let's pick something that massively uh, can, you know, play together with massive bass. A little uh, light, so I go into the synth menu and I tune it. Right, I'm gonna go ahead, straight to the amp and, and turn on the, the overdrive. 
so the, the overdrive is a, a great way to just you know pump up the volume and and uh, if you drive it a long way you, you get the distortion but if you just raise it a little bit it's more like a, an extra volume uh, control okay I'm gonna do some changing it tune tick oh that's hard sweep another thing that I do a lot is that I when I twist this knob it's in fine increments as I mentioned before but if I push and twist it's in faster and greater increments so I can in just one sweep go from 0 to 100 and 27 but if I do it like without pushing it's a lot finer fine tune oh, okay I turned down the overdrive here let's see tick noise decay noise volume shorter shorter noise tuning so now I'm gonna go back to the amp and overdrive it maybe I'm gonna push put some reverb on it you can hear this it's like a big room reverb if I want to change the, the reverb got to go to the effects menu and you can see the second line of, of um, text here and uh, that's what happens here so reverb is there I'm gonna long reverb short change the the high pass filter and the low pass filter gain change the frequency of the gain stuff and this is the uh, pre delay this okay uh, maybe okay I go back to the to the amp now and turn it turn the turn it down a bit I've got delay so when I'm here on the on the amp page of every sound I can send reverb and delay send the sound into the reverb and delay effect so if I send send it into the delay Okay, go into effects, delay. I can see that the feedback is long. So turn it down. And we can have ping pong. This is the width of the delay, ping pong delay, I think. I can also apply reverb on the delay. And I could, this is nice. If I change the the timing, it's like an al analog uh, delay, but it's in fact a digital. Another nifty feature that I could do now. Okay, this is a stable delay. You know, it's, it, it's timing, and I think the timing is set to. It's linked to the tempo actually. Let's try that. Um, go into tempo, change it. Yeah, it's slow winner. Yeah, so that the timing of the delay is timed uh, to the tempo. Okay. But another cool thing that we could do is that while we're in the effects, and we could go, there is an LFO um, available on the, the effects track. You go to the uh, LFO, and, you know, there are. Uh, the speed of the LFO is uh, how fast it's going to go if you want to fade it in, fade it out and stuff. Uh, and the destination of 
where you want to apply LFO changes is uh, with this knob. And I want to, you know, apply the delay time. Let's say uh, delay time, yes. And I want to use this shape. Let's see, this one, it's like a, um, a slope. And I want to apply it a lot. And I want to have it faster. So in essence, it's speeding up the the delay over and over again. And because it's you know restarting every time, you know it's it's like that. Uh, it's gonna sound like it's you know pitching it, pitching and pitching and pitching all the time. So, okay, exit the, the effect and go back here and send a little less of that crazy delay. All right, I'm going to go back to the delay and, uh, and maybe apply some more reverb on the delay. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Yep. So, um, yeah, okay, that's fine. And this one, the rim shot, track select the rim shot. I'm gonna go in here and because it's a lot of fun. Let's see. It sounds like uh, you know nothing. It's just a tick, but hidden within the <laughs> the rim shot is this really cool sound actually. The retrig button is very clever. Uh, well, it's pretty straight, but it's it's fun to use. Okay, what I'm going to do with the rim shot is I'm going to make it a, a, a chromatic instrument. Let's uh, make it a, a bass. Okay, I'm going to. Okay, synth. We. Uh, tune it down a bit. I'm gonna just try it out now and press the chromatic button and because this one is red and highlighted and selected when I'm going into chromatic mode that is the one that is being played chromatically. Uh, you can uh, octave shift with function up and down so yellow is high Blue is medium and pink is low. And I think blue is the lowest one. Yeah, it's gonna be here. And uh, okay, uh, let's see if I want to tune in. I don't have any reference now. Let's uh, have a, a G. And, and sorry, uh, Sin. Gonna tune in. Like that. Okay, and um, I turn it down. I gotta turn it up a bit. <laughs> Maybe there. Okay, I'm gonna bring down the tick. What about this one? Symmetry. I don't. Yeah, a bit fuller to the left. Raise it to the right, and I'm going to check this one out. I'm going to turn it down, and the sweep uh, depth. Okay, noise. Yeah, perhaps I'm a noise. Decay. So, um, okay, I'm going to go into the filter. And this is sort of the same filter found in the analog uh, keys and the analog full, but it's uh, uh, slightly tuned uh, differently, and uh, you can't be as precise as you can with the analog rhythm, uh, the analog keys. Sorry. 
but it's very good it's got the same modes so I'm gonna go into um, into low pass I guess and go there somewhere and and yeah there's a lot of bass in this machine maybe an envelope um, sweep You'll figure out how this works. It's uh, it's chromatic. And um, if you um, if you want to play a, a major scale, oh, sorry. <laughs> and then yeah, you'll figure it out after some practice, you know. Apply an LFO to the pitch and see what happens. LFO to the tune, okay, and uh, a little bit slower maybe, and then depth here. page and see what happens with the overdrive go down oh yeah you know it's always tempting to use the the overdrive because it sounds so cool but in the mix it doesn't always make sense so uh, you know, you be careful with the overdrive okay volume I'm gonna do some reverb Can do some delay. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit of it. Yeah, you know, the reverb, I probably sent, set it to, let's see, uh, reverb. Um, yeah, I think it was the high pass filter. And it's probably, you know, going to the compressor again, uh, or to the distortion. I think the reverb is some, by default, it's after the compression. So if the compression is heavy, the the, the reverb is going to be, you know, almost swallowed in the heavy com compression. So if I do it in um, pre, you can clearly hear the, the, the reverb in there now. But post, if the, if it's in post, the reverb is outside of the compression. Okay, I, I'd rather like it like this. Uh, it's um, easier to to manage. Okay. Oh, okay. I need to change that um, length of the reverb. Okay. Um. Okay. Chromatic. This is massive. Can you hear it? It's massive. Okay. Bass drum. You know. I'm gonna to go to the high tom, track select and overdrive a bit, make it shorter, um, synth. Go to, and this is a nifty feature, if you want to copy that one to that one because they share the same engine, uh, you could do the track, uh, press and copy, you see a copy bit, so track, 
copy copy track eight sound okay and track and uh, paste paste it yeah so I paste it in copy and paste okay Um, I, I saved some some presets from before I think um, function I'm gonna go track here I'm gonna load some uh, some hi-hat and you see the red can you hear the noise now by the way kicking in it's because I, I'm compression compressing quite heavily and as I mentioned earlier that if the amp DK is infinite on a lot of tracks it will after some infinite playback produce some noise so i'm gonna turn down the infinite uh, decay that's a precaution it's analog that's why if it would have been digital you know it wouldn't be a been noise like that uh, but it wouldn't be fat like this <coughs> So, um, where, where, yeah, okay. I want to um, uh, load a preset, uh, a patch that I saved earlier. Function, sound. And it brings up this little guy. So I'm going to go into the sound browser. And this is the one that I like. And press yes, it's loaded. And I'm gonna uh, copy it and paste it just as I did before. So on this one, it's gonna be press no to get out of the menu. It's gonna be um, <clears throat> short, synth. On this guy, it's gonna be long. And I think I applied some filter here and. clap as well you know we could have a sample in here to to kind of boost the clap um perhaps just to reverb mm, right, let's bring in a sample i don't know what's in it nothing it turns out no it's so I start from scratch okay there's a good opportunity to, set, to show you how you load samples into the project i'm currently in a project and it's empty of samples but on the plus drive there are a lot of um samples saved so function and global Deesh. samples we've got samples here and uh, let's see there's some factory samples here and some other stuff here there's a kit here let's see yeah this this kit might be nice and uh, you know this is a kind of a browsing experience I uh, press up and down and I press yes to enter a directory and and then you see these little arrows if I press left there is a a small menu of of uh, settings sure so don't. I can view the ROM memory it's currently empty and in while you're in the RAM memory, you can press left again and view the plus drive. So that's a, a way to jump between what's actually loaded in this memory and what's uh, on the disk. Um, I'm going here and I replace this slot that's currently empty with um, um, kick drum, and uh, and it's there. Another way to do it is to view the RAM, the plus drive, go into directory and say, I want that, I want that, I want that, that, that. Yeah, I want all of these samples. And then go into the right menu and say, load to project. It's gonna load these 11 samples into the RAM memory and just uh, put them on the, if I go to the left now to, to view the RAM, Gonna put on the um, on the first available empty slot. 
Okay, so if it's full, it's gonna say, uh, well, I uploaded as many as I could, but yeah. Okay, now I've got a couple of samples. Let's, uh, yeah, let's, um, let's see, plus drive. I'm gonna go and get some other samples as well. Let's see, um, let's do some piano. Yeah, I got a piano here. Let's do a couple of, yeah, a couple of piano hits and load the project. Yes, yes. There you go. So pressing no a couple of times to be back in the in the game. So okay, where where we? I want to have a fatter clap. Okay, I'm gonna go to synth, turn it down. I'm gonna go to the sample, turn it up. It's currently empty. You can see here on the sample slot it says off no sample there i'm going to turn this knob to start selecting so these are samples being played back in the analog circuitry and these are the pianos okay let's uh once you're in the menu you can operate it with the up and down arrows Okay, that, let's use that clap. Let's see. There is the sample bass clap. I'm gonna turn down the level. Go back to synth bass clap. You know, they were very similar. <laughs> they were extremely similar. Sample. Yeah, you know, it's a different, different sort. But what I can do with the sample is I can bit crush it. I can change where it starts and ends. And I can tune it. And I can loop it. End point. It doesn't have to be in the end, it could be in the beginning. So I could do reverse things. Yeah. And uh, so what if one is reversed and the synth bass one is is normal? I don't know, maybe a crazy idea. Yeah, like that. And then maybe add some more reverb, delay, that crazy reverb that we did, uh, delay that we did earlier. Yeah, I'm gonna do some slight reverb on the hi-hats as well. Um, okay. And uh, there's a good moment near to, uh, you know, introduce the way it's all rooted. Uh, it's eight, tr eight analog tracks, eight soundtracks, but um, uh, 12 uh, pads. So the ones w with the little uh, line between them, they share the same, um, the same track, uh, the same audio track. So if I press this one, Pressing that one afterwards will interfere. And the same with these. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna go through all the all the but I'm I if you're gonna use a long sample uh based something, uh I think it's a good idea to put it on one that at uh, one track that will not get cut off. It will be uh, uh, much safer for you to do it that way, but it's up to you to to uh, select what sounds you want to wear. But keep in mind that these uh, share the same sort of architecture, and these um, share another sort of architecture. Maybe that one is a bit special, I think, and these have another a third architecture. So sounds that you create here are not compatible 
with uh, the sounds up here and, and stuff. So pay attention. So, okay, this one, I'm gonna place that piano on this, um, I'm gonna turn down the synth and put up the sample. I'm gonna go down to the, this one perhaps it's a little bit hard in the attack so I'm gonna take the starting point point later and I'm gonna go chromatic and I'm gonna go to the amp and say reverb and I'm gonna go to the LFO and say tune it well, it turns out that's what I'm using. No, sorry, sample tune. Okay. It makes sense to tune them into the same pitch, I guess. Don't. So um, um, let's do that sample. So, so if I'm in the chromatic mode, and if I'm with this, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Okay, and uh, let's make a sort of pattern. Let's see. Okay. I already feel like um, I want to change that sound. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna make it shorter. I'm gonna make that. program these and you could record them live it's up to you you can mix the two you could quantize afterwards and you can dequantize it once you you know it's a live quantize thing and uh, stuff so let's uh let's see it um, pressing this one once so that this one is red it means that it's in the uh, edit mode uh, <clears throat> so whenever it's pressed like this it means you can start programming the tricks press play yeah and it's currently on the track uh, the highlighted track that you're programming okay so I'm gonna program the kick drum and uh, Okay, it's um, something's not right. I'm gonna go in here and check on the page and see if there's something strange going on. Oh, okay, I can see what's wrong. I'm in song mode. Um, be careful with the song mode because it, when it reaches the end of the song, it just stops. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. So I'm depressing that. We've got a kick drum. And if I press one of these trigs and change something, a value, let's say the overdrive, yeah, or the volume, yeah, and pressing these buttons again, uh, um, so if I if I have changed something like that and want to reset that change, I could press the actual uh, knob. Changing, changing, uh, a, lo a local change to this trick point, and then it's called parameter locking for you novices like me out there. And pressing again, and you reset it. And so, and then there's the tricks um, trig page uh, with a velocity setting. Sometimes, you know, I program this to re respond to velocity. But to be 
quite frank, when I go into the uh, synth velocity mod side, you can see this uh, thing is an indication of where how hard I press it. And it's quite difficult to hit the spot between 64 and 0. Um, so it's hard to be precise with the velocity. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, it's very good that it's there, but sometimes it's a bit hard to to uh, actually do loose drumming. Okay, so um, so then we can change it afterwards by pressing this, going to trig, and changing the velocity to something appropriate. So, so and then the snare drum. And uh, perhaps I'm going to make this kick drum shorter after all. I can do that while it's playing. Just go into the kick drum, uh, synth, decay. And maybe do the amp. Uh, And, and this is a balance uh, is the sound design when you if you just design one drum I think it sounds cool and then you realize that well in the music it didn't really fit with the other instruments that's perfectly normal but uh, and then you just change the balance of the mix if you will so maybe this should be brighter after all It's a better mix, okay. So it's a good way to do kind of live jam to it. And if let let's record something live now. If I press uh, rec and play, it starts blinking. And that means whatever you do is going to be recorded. So be careful not to record over something that, and just keep an eye on this this uh, little dial because if it's red, you're entering things in the sequencer. It's blinking. It's um, recording live. Uh, you can you can change these things while it's playing without anybody noticing. Okay, so I'm going to record something. Totally out of time. Listen to this. Okay. Yeah, totally out of time. And how to fix that? Well, I press the function and trig. I'm gonna change the trig timing. And there's a global quantizer. I could, I could quantize just one track. And this is, um, it's not a permanent quantize. These are live quantizers, so even if the trig is set off, uh, it's going to be just played back in time, and then you could turn off the quantizer again. But but let's do it um, globally. So perfectly in time. And if I wanted to add some swing, I could press function and swing. You see the red button here. And I could add some swing. Like that and what's even nicer with a swing um i usually sometimes you you want to there's one place where you don't want to apply swing and sometimes where you, where you want to have swing you can see the buttons lighting up here when i press function of swing you can actually make turn on and off for the swing points you know So it's, now it's uh, you know swinging, but if I want to um, have this part straight, I can. Uh, oops. 
is a very nice feature. Um, okay, uh, let's let's add some. to be a bass. Okay. Okay. Record. There we go. Got this crazy bass now. I'm gonna select the piano. twice the length if I do it I could press function and press this little button here the page button and I press it and I enter the scale mode where I could actually um, if I hold function and press um, up and down here or just press this button while I'm here you know it jumps to 32 um, trigger points it's twice as as long. So if you check this out, you could, you know, you have four pages as maximum, and one page is shorter. But you can actually have it shorter than that. You can have like a twelve page, twelve trigger points long. And if 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 you know if the first page is full of something, and you press this and make it two pages. The data from the first page is that copied to the second page, uh, so it's not completely silent. Uh, okay, and I press no to exit. Yeah, I should make it full straight away. Okay, and if I do rec and play here. I can actually make it pre-count. Um, if I press function and click, I go into the metronome page, I can activate the metronome, and I can also uh, turn pre-roll on. So I do that now. So, so I'm gonna do it. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. Sorry. Ah, I thought I'd turn it on. Let's see what, uh, pre-roll. Okay, I need to turn on the the actual click first, otherwise it won't work. So pre-roll one bar and the metronome, the click is active. So okay, and uh, record and play. gonna do something fun now well I think it's fun well first I'm gonna go into the mute page and I'm gonna mute everything except for that piano and then I'm gonna do performance mode where pressure is gonna apply the the pitch of that sample so we okay, performance mode and I'm gonna press function and let's see that one I want this to change the pitch up. So function and this means that I'm gonna make a performance um, setting on this button. Track and that one. So the track and the function, you know, keep these apart. Track and this, this is the track that I'm gonna affect. Function and the pad, this is the pad that's gonna change, the, yeah, okay. The, the red one is the, the actual sound. Okay, 
And while I'm holding down on the actual performance patch, um, I can go into the synth or the sample of this page and say, okay, I want to add, you can even see it dimly lighting up. I want to add to the um, tuning. Let's say I want to add 12 to be kind of nice. And let's function and this one, this one I want to subtract from the tuning. Uh, still, so first function this and then press it and then twist the knob where you're going to change some parameters and and press fun performance again to to kind of exit the the edit mode so function and press to enter the edit mode press performance again to exit the, the edit mode so now when they light up in pink or purple you know that you're not in edit mode but when you press function and and the performance pad you know that when it's green and lighting up in white it means that you are in edit mode you're changing things okay keep this apart it's easy to do mistakes so let's see yeah yeah okay so we go to to, to this guy I turn things on again Good. In the same manner, I could go into performance mode and function this guy and track this guy and pressing it. I'm in edit mode and I'm going to change the, the, um, the snare drum to be a little longer decay, a little longer noise and on the amp page a little longer reverb, more reverb. Okay, see what happens now. Uh, maybe even more. And I could change that while it's playing. It might be easy, to, to, um, easy for me to hit the right spot. So let's play. And uh, function track. stuff and solo stuff if you press the retrig button it turn blue and a solo and there's this if you press um, function no sorry yeah if you press function and mute stuff they're gonna be blue until you release function to use you know timing and if, if if it's more pads then you your fingers can sort of match in one go okay and then scenes mode it's the same as sort of like performance mode but it's instant changes instant parameter changes so whereas this is gradual changes the scenes are instant changes so I'm going to do, um, let's see, one scene that is shortening all the, all the, the decay on all the tracks. Let's see what happens then. Okay, so um, track this one, function this one. Okay, and the same, it works the same way. I'm going to function, track, press. And then while I'm pressing, 
I uh, I can change things. So uh, I'm gonna go to the bass drum and uh, synth. Turn down the decay. I'm gonna go to the other track and turn down the decay. stuff you can do and um, I'm gonna turn on the mirror again so I can see it. hello guys <laughs> and so I can keep going for hours and hours obviously and I do all the time but but this I hope this will give you a little sneak peek of what you can do with it and uh, a little bit of walkthrough on how you do things and and yeah please hit me up with comments below and, and tell me what you think and what you are wondering about and uh, and uh, i hope i can help you in another video so this is not the end of the analog rhythm rhythm videos this is just the beginning um so peace out and uh, stay nice and stay cuckoo don't be afraid to be a fool and you know all is good and if you want to, you can subscribe to me here on YouTube, or if you want to uh, support me financially, there's a thing called Patreon that I'm using, uh, where you can um, donate a, a small amount or a big amount of whatever you want to every new content that I deliver. And uh, that's it for today. So, um, okay, see you soon. Goodbye.